Hi, I'm Judy Ray Brooks. Welcome to Wild Woman Wisdom and HealingQuest.tv. I hope that all of you are having a very good week. I have special guest today that I recently interviewed via Zoom from his home in India, Kamlish Patel, or known to some affectionately as Dodgy. He offers a very practical, experimental approach to meditation and the evolution of consciousness that is simple and easy to follow. His new book, Spiritual Anatomy, which I've been reading and finding very interesting, I'm loving it, it's all about heartfulness. He is a pharmacist by trade and a best-selling author, also an environmentalist who spearheaded an initiative developing Kanashanti Vanam, a green ecological paradise on 14 acres of rainforest in India. It's an animal sanctuary, medical and educational center, and a wellness retreat. And I really want to go and visit him there. He is the leader of the heartfulness movement, and his work is a unique blend of science and spirituality. You have been a spiritual leader and teacher for decades and uh, influencing people and thousands of people all over the world with your meditation practices. So maybe... uh, why you decided at this point in time to to write this book? Well, this book has always been there since 1945. Uh, It was written by my masters, but now I have rephrased it in the modern language that we can understand, we can relate to. It is not merely a belief system. As more knowledge has descended and more realization dawned upon me, I have said... um, that there are not just seven chakras, but there are infinite numbers of chakras, out of which almost 17 to 18 are palpable. You can f- feel their presence. And how, at while being at each chakra, how our consciousness keeps changing. And that is what I'm trying to offer, that see that spiritual anatomy is not a myth. Spiritual anatomy is not a belief system. Spiritual anatomy, like physiological anatomy that we have, we have a neurological aspect of our existence. But hardly anyone has written so boldly, so experience, uh, I mean, offering with experiences um, that one can experiment meditation while meditating on each chakra and and feel the difference in their consciousness yes so I, that is that is why i have we have we have been trying to say that experience beyond the seven chakras and remain open uh, meaning that don't be dogmatic and say uh, there are only seven chakras. Open up and see, try to try to feel that there is something greater, so there is something beyond all these things. Yes, I thought that was fascinating. I know here in the West we tend to think of the, just the seven chakras, but uh, in reading your book, it was interesting to see how so many of them are on the upper, upper part of the body, right? And and the higher consciousness. That's, that's right. Yes, and how. Each one relates to a different aspect of 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 our self of our of our consciousness. Is that correct? Am I am I getting that right? That's right, Julie. <laughs> okay. And I have also tried to mention that how each chakras are formed and how chakras are formed before we are even uh, released into this world. Mm-hmm. How they form right after conception and how at the moment of death how each chakra collapses into the another one. Oh. So that, yeah, that is also, I mean, it's a great knowledge that we have shared in this book. I think that there were so many, there were so many parts of the book that I really loved. One of the things that I was attracted to was how you speak about how our attitudes are so important. And I'd love to share some of your thoughts uh, on that with, uh, with our audience. Can we talk about that again? I mean, we know how we know it's important to have a good attitude and to to stay positive, but you really you really highlight why it's so important. When I observe people practicing various systems of meditations or 
going to temples or going to churches, you know, what is the motive? And this motive determines the kind of inner aura that you create within yourself, your inner attitude. Are you going to such holy places as a beggar mm -hmm. that God gave me this and God forgive me for this and go on repeating the same thing for which you ask the forgiveness? Uh, you know, uh, or are you going out of love? Likewise, when we meditate, am I meditating to create certain meditative state? Or am I meditating because it is going to improve my health? Is it because I like to have God realization? Is it because of peace of mind? All this colors my inner attitude. It creates a filter. Higher the goal, better will be your attitude. We have to make sure of that. Mm. And the most beautiful attitude is one that of love and compassion. Open your heart and sit and see how beautifully um, one can receive the transmission that I have already mentioned in this book yes. and feel the Im impact of it. And when we see the openness of the heart, you see, you're talking about women wisdom and healing power of this wisdom. Uh, when we talk of consciousness, I would touch upon one aspect that consciousness gets impacted by three things. One of them is the way you think. Another one is why, how you intellectualize. And third thing, how your ego plays out. Mm -hmm. These three aspects affect the consciousness, the ability to perceive, ability to be aware. Now, um, when we say when my evolution is happening at a consciousness level, what happens to my thinking? what happens to my intellect and what happens to my ego, because these are the things that impacts my consciousness. Will my thinking change? Will my intellect change? Will my ego change? And I have experience in many people who have been practicing spirituality. Uh, they all, I think, feel uniformly same thing, that thinking changes. It's no longer thinking but we transcend thinking into feelings. We, we, we move from, we transcend from the mind, we enter the dimension of the heart more. <laughs> and that's, that, that's where the ability to be receptive, to be uh, ability to be open remains. Um, I give you some example from my own life that, you know, I ran a pharmacy business and it is still going on in New York City. In New York, I know, yeah. Uh, and um, many a times you would have some problems and you are stressed out and you remain like that for two months, three months and you don't know what to do with that situation. A mother looks at you, what happened to you? Last two months you have been indifferent, you know. And wife would ask, your sister would ask, other sisters or friends who are ladies, they will ask, what's wrong with you? They perceive it faster. And when you try to explain to them, before even you finish the problems, they come up with a solution. <laughs> I have seen that time and again. Mom would say, why don't you do this? She doesn't think much. But she comes up with a very bold answer through her own perception. So I feel uh, that the perception, ability to perceive things, which is a heart-based uh, function. That means my mother is far, 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 far better than myself. Why? My sisters, my, because of this ability to perceive, because of the openness of the heart. Okay. The wisdom of women is of a different level. The women think, feels differently. God's, you know, many people say we like to be equal. 
<laughs> Don't try to be equal. You are already superior. Well, I think that if we can just be uh, holding on to both the parts of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that has the masculine energy and the feminine energy and have a balance seems to work for a lot of people if they can get to that point. Because we, would you agree we all have both? Definitely. Balancing the both, masculine as well as feminine, I would say try to integrate them. Just as there is an extrovert person and there is an introvert person, just as there is a life dimension like, you know, uh, life of jobs, life at home, life in the outside world, right. versus the life within myself, we call emotional life, we call next one is spiritual life. Right? They all must be integrated. If I try to separate them, then I would lead a polarized life. What if I am ruthless in my business world and I try to become loving and compassionate in my spiritual life? I cannot polarize myself like that. In fact, I'll have to spiritualize my material life, my life at business. Yeah, you have to integrate them is what you're saying. Integrate. Yeah, right. that's what I'm trying. To. And, and mm -hmm. also... As you do this, you're raising your consciousness, right? But that changes all the time. <laughs> I know that you have a heartfulness practice that, um, and you have people that actually will help. They can people can go to your website and find someone that will uh, assist them in their meditations. And that practice, as you say, uh, it's a practice, and it's something that we need to do mindfully. Uh, all the time. And I, I know that you've, you've been teaching meditation for years, and that's something that you do on a regular basis and provide to thousands of people all over the world with this program. Can you speak to that a little bit? Because I think that might be something that our listeners would be interested in knowing about, especially during these troubled <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah. Well, whoever likes to try meditation. Mm-hmm. They don't have to come to India or they don't have to travel around and fall at someone's feet and make them a guru. No. Nowadays, let's make use of technology. We have the app called Heartfulness app. You can download that. And whenever you feel like meditating, you know, it's like Uber. You, whenever you want a taxi, <laughs> <laughs> you order a taxi, it, it, it comes to your doorsteps. Yes. Like where, you know, you woke up early in the morning at 2 o'clock and you can't fall asleep uh, and you don't know whom to call at 2 o'clock in the morning to meditate with you. So you just use that app. So maybe, maybe someone is awake in Japan or someone is awake in China or India and they can connect with you, you know. And I we all have our phones and lying around with the, on our bedside and if you're awake and we see the ping, ping that, you know, someone is interested in meditation, we jump on it and we <laughs> accept that call and say, okay, Judy, now you can meditate. I am with you now. So just follow the steps. And we spend about half an hour uh, meditating together. And you make, you make a note of the experience that you have gone through during that meditation mm -hmm. try to understand try to feel perceive the state of meditative mind before and after and almost in all cases 99.99 percent .99 cases you will feel the difference and change or a shift in consciousness that is guaranteed well you say something that i, I think is beautiful and that is the best gift that you can give the universe is your transformed self. And I, I, I think, yes, that's, a, that's, that's such a beautiful um, thought and, and feeling because I think sometimes we, we forget that just our, our very being can, can help someone. I mean, a smile or, or, or a kind word can help someone in that moment because we never really know what's going on in someone else's life. Or, or And we live in such uh, a chaotic world right now. I mean, can you can you address that for a moment? Because I, I, I'm noticing in my work that 
I mean, we have such collective trauma that. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I mean, would you would you agree that that that's that that's happening, and it probably always has been, but for some reason, um, we're very much more aware of it. I guess it's the division and all, and just anything that you could say to give some comfort to some people out there that might be uh, <laughs> suffering. Well, I cannot change anyone else. No. As an individual, as a father, as a grandfather, as a friend to someone, I can inspire. Mm -hmm. But can I change someone else? But I have noticed one thing with this meditation. Let's say if someone comes to me heartbroken, mm -hmm. the way I was also heartbroken once upon a time. I offered a girl, I would why, would you please marry me? She refused. Oh. <laughs> so you can ima imagine my state of mind and my state of heart. Yes. Totally, they was totally gone. I mean, at that time, I felt that earth was moving below my feet and, and I needed a support. Mm. <laughs> that was in the, during my pharmacy college days. But then I went to my trainer who would, trained me in this meditation. Uh -huh. Only person I could reach out to that, yes, she can help me. She was motherly to me. She was so loving and compassionate. I, she told me, Kamlesh, please don't try to meditate today. <laughs> I will meditate for you. I will meditate with you. But you don't meditate. You go home. And I said, tomorrow I have my exams. He said, don't worry, don't even study. Oh. Yeah. And that's I did exactly what she told me. And that is it. I was elevated to clouds after that. I don't know what she did to me through this transmission and meditation. I was absolutely relieved from it. I could get rid of those heavy, you know, those lead like uh, feelings that you have heavy feelings in your heart i could get rid of it instantly uh, did i forget it no mm. memory remains but the emotional baggage gets cleaned up oh i love that yes yeah <laughs> because to to you know we have only two types of memories one is cognitive memory at the mind level and we have emotional memory at the heart level what troubles us the most is this emotional baggage that we carry in the heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, once you, once you, once it is cleaned up, once it is removed through this heartfulness cleaning practice, you are free from that baggage, free from that burden. And I would not recommend that you should forget cognitive memory. Let it be there. It teaches us some lessons. Mm -hmm. Don't let it uh, overpower you. Don't let that be, what did you call it? Yeah. Maybe the monkey mind sometimes? <laughs> monkey mind, that is its business. I mean, you can't stop it. <laughs> let it be. Let it remain a monkey. It's okay. It's, it's okay? Right. Okay. It's all right. As long as you can handle the monkey and train the monkey. You can train the monkey to bring mangoes from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you see the jung jungle book? Yes, yes. Where the Mughli is training Balu the bear. Uh -huh. And Balu the bear, he is so, you know, then he, he takes help of Bagheera. I mean, not Bagheera, this Mughli gets the honey done. Imagine if, if you can train a monkey to climb a tree and help you fetch honey. I, I... So mind, mind is not our enemy, only it can become our best friend when we train this mind. And like, meditation helps there. It helps tame a monkey mind. Uh, well, I like that. Let's talk for a second again about what you mean by a transmission, because I think that was a really important part of the book for me. A transmission is the yogic energy that we use in transformation or fine-tuning each chakra. Uh, fine-tuning means how to remove this emotional baggage. And depending upon the emotional weight of the baggage, 
it settles on higher or the lower chakras. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like, you know, when you observe the evening sky and you see different colors in the sky, mm -hmm. it shows how the polluted air is having a gradient. The, the darker portion will be at the lower level and the more refined impurities yeah. will yeah. settle yes. on the top. Yes. Like that. So, anger, extreme passion, uh, divorce someone at any cost and have this rape inst instinct in one's heart. Uh, that settles at the lowest part of your chakras. And the higher uh, impurities related to ego mm -hmm. will settle at the higher chakras. Now, when you compare calmness, peacefulness, Versus the restless heart. Okay, that's one state of consciousness. Another one, you can say heart is so content. Uh -huh. Versus heart is so desirous of so many things. Okay, that's another level of consciousness. Third one, you are so afraid, you're so fearful. Versus you have, you have become so courageous and fearless in your heart. That's another level of polarity of consciousness. Fourth, you can say there is so much of compassion in your heart. And at the same time, the same chakra will also talk about indifference or hate. Hmm. There are chakras where you feel so clarity. At the same time, there will be so confusion. So each chakra has two opposite qualities. Right. Now, I give you a small example. Our mind, as you say, it's a monkey mind. Mm -hmm. Our attention is either positive or negative or neutral. Better neutral, huh? <laughs> yeah, better neutral, yes. Then let's say when you are, when you are flying, and you're going from one city to another, you're seated in a flight and you are on the first row or second row and you keep on watching passengers coming in. What goes through your mind? Or you're in a train, what goes through your mind? Or you're driving, what goes through your mind when the way how other people drive? <laughs> oh, it's a good driver, it's a bad driver. Sometimes you don't even notice what's happening there. Uh, Oh, she's a good passenger. He is not a, such a good passenger. He's, why is he carrying so much of baggage in the, you know, doesn't, don't they know how to travel? This chatter goes on. And man would keep thinking, oh, this air hostess is so good. I wish she was in my bed tomorrow night. <laughs> right? So this, what do you see when you see a TV, when you watch a TV? Well, it depends how much you're watching. So there are mainly two categories, two streams of my positive and negative things. One is about person. Oh, he is so charming. She is so beautiful, right? And the sensual tendencies wake up in us. That's one part. Second part is about worldly things, house, cars, refrigerators clothes, things mm -hmm. like that. Now, when you desire a person versus desire an object, which is heavy emotion? A person. Yes, okay. that is heavier. And that settles at a chakra I have named in this book as a chakra called B chakra, mm -hmm. where all the essential tendencies would settle there. And <laughs> worries related to existential life, where from my next salary come, or how would I feed my children, where would I get the money for paying the school fees for my children. These sort of worries will be at a slightly higher level of chakra, and we call that chakra A. And, uh, you know, even a person who is not meditating, is not interested in spirituality, try to create certain feelings in your heart and see how, how those feelings strikes which part of your chest area. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
just just see the one square foot of area in your chest. Mm -hmm. And especially if you want to narrow it down, just focus only on the left side. Okay. Okay. And I, I assure you, whenever you think of the opposite sex, that point B would will get so activated. Some vibrations would start there. Similarly, point A. Of course, people who meditate, they instantly feel it. Even when they don't try to make any effort to feel it, they just feel it. Yeah, And these are all, that's why I say, experienceable, perceptible uh, thing as we advance more and more spiritually. Likewise, um, when we are going beyond or when our so-called tendency to dominate under all situations or under certain situation goes down, you know, the frequency. you become more, yeah, like uh, I like the idea today you started generally, I recommend to close their eyes and meditate before we begin any meetings. I but I'm too. Glad, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today I was so happy, Judy, you started this meeting interview with a prayerful heart, with a meditative mind. And that changes everything. Even in a even in in a board meeting, imagine all the directors sitting there and before this begin the meeting, close their eyes and just just center themselves for just two minutes. That will change the outcome, the quality of a board meeting. It Similarly, in, 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 a, in a classroom also, if all the children are made to relax and make them quiet, imagine the receptivity of children in the class. It shifts the energy. Shifts, shifts the energy. It shifts the energy. And, yeah. and they will learn, they'll become better students. The outcome of the board meeting will also change. So I feel that spirituality is even at home when you're alone and eat, partake the food with grateful heart. Or even if you are sitting in Burger King or McDonald's and <laughs> just be yourself, center yourself and partake your burger. We need to kind of come to a close here. Thing. What I want to say is it's, the book will be out October, right? And Yes. And it will be available everywhere, and that's spiritual anatomy. Are you going to have uh, an audio version as well? That it'll be Kindle and, and hard copy, or you know? Yes, that will be audible. Okay. Oh, audible too. Oh, great! Because I think just hearing your voice uh, is settling for people. It certainly has settled me down. And we we started <laughs> with some technical difficulties today, and that kind of. Uh, got all washed away, which is nice. And so I always like to ask if there's one last message that you would like to leave our listeners and viewers with. Definitely. That I wish that people would approach spirituality with a scientific mind and rootless heart. Ooh. Dissect things, dissect things. Just don't have a blind belief because what do you do with a belief anyway? a Christian or a Hindu or a Muslim or a Jew talking about God and say, oh, I believe in God. Big deal. <laughs> what do you do after that? Yeah. Have you changed your heart? Has your heart changed? On one side you pray and on the other side you feel like shooting someone down. Mm. Mm. That doesn't work. You know. So we have to transcend the religion experiment this universality of existence of God and become more loving. Experiment and see how meditation can change and make us more loving, more compassionate and kind. There is no point becoming religious without really, really changing the heart and becoming better human being. We praise the lords. Yeah. But have we become like lords? I've been speaking with Kamlish Patel, also known as Dodgy, about his new book, Spiritual Anatomy, which is now available everywhere. You can find out more about Dodgy and his work, and you can also find out about that app that we talked about at heartfulness.org. And if you'd like to, you can follow him on Facebook and Instagram at Kamlish Dodgy. The video version of this podcast is on our Healing Quest YouTube channel. The audio is on iHeart, 
or SoundCloud or actually anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And we would love it if you followed us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. And you can also follow me at wildwomanwisdom.org on Facebook and Instagram. And nowwithpurpose.com, I'm doing some work with them, and you can find it there at nowwithpurpose.com, where you'll also find some really interesting uh, stories. I'm Judy Ray Brooks, and I want to leave you with this final thought today, and that is, life is easier and better if you're living with an open heart. I hope you have a healthy week. Bye-bye. <laughs>